everybody. Thank you for joining us on another episode of What to Watch. I'm Savannah Jones. And I'm Rex Ravita. Today we have Jasmine Matthews from the movie Big George Foreman, which tells the remarkable life story of world heavyweight boxing champion George Foreman. So again, we just want to thank you, Jasmine, for, you know, taking some time out of your day to talk to us. (laughs) Absolutely. Anything for Texas. I live for it. (laughs) Yes, we're going to get into that too. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your role and how you reacted when you found out that you got the part. Yeah, so I play the role of Mary Joan Foreman, which is George Foreman's current wife. Um, And she is a whole lot of things. (laughs) She's a a spiritual mentor. She's a lover. She's a disciplinary. She's a nurturer. Um, I remember when I first talked to George Tillman about the role, I kind of made a comparison that she is Mother Mary and Joan of Arc at the same time, right? She has this soft and nurturing side, but also there is such a strength about her, you do not want to mess with her. Um, And so with this role, you know, um, there's a lot of tests that she had to overcome, the biggest one being a test of faith and um, the love and care that she had for her husband, George Foreman. Um, It was all about seeing through to his heart and seeing that he was a man of spirituality and not just what everybody saw on the outside, you know, the facade of the boxer and the this and that. Um, So bringing the love and the strength and the spirituality of Mary Joan as much as I could was really important to me. And uh, as far as getting the role, I had a talk with George Tillman, who is our director, uh, back in August... Oof, 2021, wow. I think. Um, and we just had a, a conversation and I told him what I saw in the role and I told him about the Mother Mary, Joan of Arc um, analogy. And from there, I had a couple of auditions. I had a couple of callbacks. It stretched out to like January, 2022. I had a test with Chris Davis who plays George Foreman. And then I got the role in February of 2022. So as you just said, I know you're a Houston native, correct? Yes, I am. To the day I die. (laughs) And George Foreman grew up there as well. So how does it feel as a Houston native to play such a key role in this movie? It's amazing. Um, I love when we have giants come out of our city uh, because we don't have as many as other states or cities as you will. But um it was really exciting and growing up I didn't know much about Mr. Foreman I knew about the grill right I knew he was a boxer but I had no idea he was a preacher I had no idea that he still had a church and was still preaching at it um so learning more about his story inspired me um to continue to walk in my faith and it grew my love for the city because I'm sitting here thinking what Houston would have been like back in the day in the 80s and the 90s um so just being able to tell this story knowing that he's from Houston just grew my love for the city so much more yeah so a big part of the story is George's religious epiphany which led Mm -hmm. him to become a minister so did you Mm -hmm. pull from any personal experiences when you were preparing for like religious experiences when you were preparing for this role Yeah, um, like I said before, one of the biggest uh, internal conflicts Mary Joan was having was her doubt uh, and and comparing that to what God said was going to happen. You know, how could George Foreman at 325 pounds and in his 40s go back and, and win this heavyweight championship again? So there was a lot of doubt and there was a lot of how are you going to make this happen, God? And for me personally, I've always known that I wanted to be an actress ever since I was two years old. And um, my test of faith has been about maintaining that dream and holding on to it in the midst of not being able to see how it's going to happen. So I've had my own doubt, you know, and, and I still battle with it sometimes because, you know, doing this is is hard and you know you're constantly being told no and trying not to take it personally but you have to have that faith and you have to hold on to that dream that God gave you that he gave me when I was two years old um so it's a constant back and forth pull between what God said and what I'm seeing and not paying attention to that that's great walking by faith and not by sight that's it that's it that's it I know filming was pushed back a few times, correct? Mm-hmm. 
and you guys it ended was. up filming it in New Orleans. So did you get the chance at all to explore the city while you were there? You've probably been there before, right? Of course. I love New Orleans. And I have family from Louisiana, uh, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Brobridge, uh, Lafayette. So it wasn't my first time there. I spent many a summer in New Orleans. Um, and I have like ancestors from way back who are in New Orleans as well, who were in New Orleans as well. So um, I love that city. You know, it's home and being from Houston and having uh, family members from Louisiana, we grew up on the food. The tricky part about being in New Orleans and filming is not uh, eating <laughs> so much food and gaining weight. You come back three weeks later and people are like, what? Oh my god. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I had a chance to explore the city. I love New Orleans. Yeah. That must have been yeah. a lot of fun. So it was. Is, is there anything that you really want the viewers to take away from this film mm. or just from George Foreman's story in particular? Yeah. Um I think first and foremost, I'm really excited for people to be able to experience uh George Foreman's legacy in totality. I think people have bits and pieces of what it may be. You know, they know he was a boxer or they know about the George Foreman Grove. We're talking about younger generations, but no one knows his story as a whole. So I'm really uh, excited for audience members to be able to honor and pay homage to his legacy and his life story. Um, and also, I think um, this is a story about a humble man who not by chance stumbled upon uh, and stumbled into the world of boxing and he did great things and he lost it all and he found God and with God was able to do the impossible. So what I would love for audience members to take away from this is the inspiration of Mr. Foreman's story, um, his legacy, and I hope that they are moved to self-reflect on their own personal relationship and walk with God and how he can take your dream and and turn it into your purpose and create miracles from that beautiful <laughs> I, I have to say me and Savannah were talking about it before this and we both mm -hmm. were like we know bits and pieces of this story like you kind of said but obviously our generation for sure thinks of the George Foreman grill and even yeah. just after watching the trailer I started researching him and I was like wow like there really is such an inspiring story behind all of it that the world really doesn't know or the that's right. general public anyway yeah that's right yeah yeah so I, i'm really excited for them to to be able to see that and it's really a story about how um how relevant and 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 successful one's faith and spirituality can be in the modern world mm. you know um people don't really um i guess see the benefit of of, of faith and and religion and why it is so important to walk with God on this journey. Uh, and I think you can take that away from Mr. Foreman's story. Cause I don't know if he hadn't have found God um, in his walk, you know, I don't know if he would have, have returned to boxing. Mm -hmm. And I also don't know if he would have won. And <laughs> I'm gonna go so far as to say, you know, even Mary Joan having her in his life, she was his anchor spiritually and she was there to keep him on that path to hold on to what he had been building with God and so you know I am a firm believer that God put Mary Joan in his life for that purpose as well and I don't know if he would have come out the same George Foreman the second time around if Mary Joan also wasn't in his life so it's it's amazing to see how God has really worked in his life did you ever get the opportunity to speak to George at all before the film or anyone on set yeah, not before the film, but he did come and visit us um, in the middle of filming. And he is such a sweet man. He's so sweet and kind and humble and a little shy. Um, and I didn't get the chance to meet Mary Joan. Uh, I understand she's a very private person and that's something that we have in common. So I wasn't going to push about it. So when I met Mr. Foreman, I took the time to ask him about Mary Joan and some of the struggles that she may have faced, um, you know, with his return to boxing, because I couldn't imagine just being, you know, living this life, having one big happy family and, and, and having this regular routine. And then all of a sudden your husband goes, I'm gonna go back to boxing at 40 years old. I couldn't imagine her just waking up and saying, okay, 
<laughs> no. So I really wanted to understand um, how hard that was for her to accept and to support him. And so I asked him those questions and, and he did confirm that that was her biggest fear, uh, losing him and losing the family. Um, so I was really grateful to, to hear that side uh, of Mary Jones story from him. Um, and he also expressed to me how much he loves that woman. And it was really beautiful to see. He sent me a song that he wrote for her. <laughs> it was really, really sweet. So I think um, those two things that I got from him was something that I really made sure that were always present in the story, that internal conflict that she had and the love between George Foreman and Mary Joan. That's awesome that you were able to get, yeah. you know, some personal, like, yes my connection from that so that's really cool yes yeah it was awesome and he asked to, to hear my accent because you know she's from uh Monrepo St. Lucia okay. at the time at the time <laughs> I, I was you know <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm I'm a generally like uh quiet internal person but he was like let me hear your accent and I was like um <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it when the movie comes out <laughs> I don't know what it is we've interviewed somebody before and we're like oh can we hear the accent and they're like ah yeah maybe and then we end up not hearing yeah, it <laughs> no you know it's such a vulnerable thing especially as an artist um especially when you're in the process because you share some of that with someone else and if they pass judgment on it it's going to bring a lot of um a lot of doubt and, and, and self-conscious thoughts up and you're not going to be able to perform as well when you're filming. So we just keep it, you know, protected. I understand. Yeah. I can, re I, re yeah. I respect that. I respect that. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> having to, you know, you have to get into the process, get into, you know, character and get into that zone. So that's, that's right. like in exactly. that zone. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Now. And you got to protect it. <laughs> that's to protect it. All right. That's so it. just to end out, we're going to do a little bit of trivia it'll be okay yeah it'll be multiple choice you know just to give this so you know it's not too bad but, okay um don't feel bad if you don't get anything right because you know you. you're still a winner to us <laughs> thank you i appreciate that <laughs> i'm a bit competitive so we'll see how i do <laughs> first question starting off hopefully this is easy this is easy for you what name did George give his five sons? A George. Oh, she got it. <laughs> Sorry. Name, That's it. We're, we're done. That's it. George. <laughs> I was researching. I saw the director's name was George Tillman. I was like, all right, it's confusing over here. George. So George, George, George. So confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Next is who is the only boxer to have ever killed a man in the ring? That is. You want the choices or do you know? Yeah, you can give me the choices. <laughs> Sugar Ray Robinson, Mike Tyson, Sonny Liston, or George Foreman? Okay, it's not Mr. Foreman. Uh, ooh. I know Tyson bit somebody's ear off. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just go with Tyson. Mm -mm. Who is it, Sonny Liston? Sugar Ray Robinson. That's I said, cool. Jesus. I said Sunny listening to. I don't know why I felt like I heard that before. I don't know. Right. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> so what was the nickname of the 1974 boxing match that pitted undefeated world heavyweight champion George Foreman against former champion Muhammad Ali? Uh -huh. is, or is it A, the showdown at Boomtown, B, the rumble in the jungle, C, the Thriller in Manila, or D, the Ambush in the Flatbush? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with B, Rumble in the Jungle. All right. <laughs> and our final question, what year did the George Foreman Grill make its debut? Okay. Either going to be <laughs> 98, 96, 89, or 94? Okay, it's definitely not. 89, I don't think. I'm gonna go with 96? Close. <laughs> 94. Very close, very close. It was Damn. 90, <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you know, half. You got the ones that matter. That's okay. You, that, you that's definitely right. got the ones that matter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that was fun. <laughs> That was fun. I'm gonna have to. I know. I know the uh, the actor that plays George Foreman, Chris Davis. Um, <laughs> he can be like, "You ain't no Sugar Ray Robinson. Kill somebody." <laughs> that's just that's you know, Mary story. June. She didn't have to know all that stuff. She didn't. So. She didn't she have did to know it. it. <laughs> all the stuff Mary Jump knew, you got right. So that's what matters. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>